Many people suffer from different types of diseases and disorders. Some fail to survive and fight against them. Not many people are aware of the existence of rare forms of diseases that people are suffering from in various parts of the world. One of them is the Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is a genetic disease that has changed the lives of the affected and their loved ones. This is Galvin. He was born on November 13, 2005. Galvin looked normal at first, but soon his parents began to notice that their son was low in his development. The signs began more obvious when Audrey, Galvin's sister, was born. He never spoke a word. He was afraid of stairs, and when he fell, he couldn't get up. Galvin appeared healthy at first, but his symptoms gradually developed. He began to lose coordination and has trouble swallowing and breathing. On March 2, 2009, the results came back confirming that Galvin had Tay-Sachs disease. So I got a call from the doctor saying, you know, we got the diagnosis, we want you to call us right away. So I called Jan, I said, call him up and, you know, let us know what the diagnosis was. When he said, um, unfortunately, um, your son has Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease, also known as GM2 gangliosidosis, or hexosaminidase A deficiency, is a rare autosomal recessive in the genes. There are around 250 people living with the disease right now. Tay-Sachs is caused by a genetic mutation in the hexa gene, which prevents the body from producing an enzyme called hexosaminidase A or hexa. Without this enzyme, a fatty substance called GM2 ganglioside builds up in the cells of the brain and nerves, causing the brain and the nerves to stop working normally and eventually destroying the infected individual. Patients with the disease would develop a progressive deterioration of nerve cells, mental and physical abilities. This begins around 6 months of age and usually results in death by the age of 4. Chromosome 15 is where the enzyme production of hexa gene is being coded. The mutation of this gene is caused by a 4-base insertion into the normal hexa allele, leading to frameshift mutation. Both of Gavin's parents are carriers of the disease, and when two carrier parents have children, there are three possible outcomes. First case, both parents do not pass the gene mutation to the child, and the child will be normal. Second case, one parent passes the gene mutation to the child, but the other parent doesn't. The child will not suffer from Tay-Sachs disease, but will be the carrier of Tay-Sachs gene. Lastly, both parents pass the gene mutation to the child, and the child will suffer from Tay-Sachs disease. Depending upon the mutation pass, the child may likely die at a very young age, often from pneumonia. As we look at these possible outcomes, there is a 25% chance both parents do not pass the gene mutation to the child, a 50% chance one of the parents passes the gene mutation, and a 25% chance both parents pass the gene mutation. Gavin's conditions worsened. He can now no longer walk or eat by himself. Many patients with Tay-Sachs diseases, like Gavin, develop the symptoms around 3-6 to six months of age. The patients begin to have muscle weaknesses, sudden contractions of large muscles with falling asleep, and may lose the ability to perform tasks. They have decreased eye movements and attentiveness, as seen along with a specific change in the eye called a sherry red spot which can be seen during an eye exam. Nathan first appeared to be just like other ordinary kids as he would do all the little things normally babies love to do. He would grab his parents' fingers and play with the toys above his bed. Everything seemed to be normal for Nathan and his family until their friend's child, who is two months younger than Nathan, started passing him up. At the age of two, Nathan still couldn't speak, sit up on his own, 
or hold his own bottle. And as time passes, his conditions worsened. Nathan was diagnosed with a Tay-Sachs disease. Now he has to spend a majority of his time getting speech, occupational and physical therapy, as well as respiratory care using chest physiotherapy or CPT. CPT forces air and medicines into his lungs and helps break up mucus that may build up so he could cough it out to prevent pneumonia. At the moment, there's not a future. There's never been a child who's ever survived Tay-Sachs. There is no cure for Tay-Sachs disease. The treatments available given to Nathan as well as other people with the same diseases are for support and comfort. To prevent people with Tay-Sachs disease from developing respiratory problems by inhaling food or liquid to the lungs while eating, doctors are recommending an assistive feeding device, a nasogastric tube. A nasogastric tube is inserted through the patient's noses and goes to the patient's stomachs. Another method is the doctors may surgically insert an esophagogastrotomy tube through the patient's stomachs. Physical therapy is also necessary for people with the disease. As the disease progresses, people with TSD may receive physical therapy to help keep joints flexible and maintain as much ability to move, to move as possible. Physical therapy can also delay joint stiffness and reduce or delay the loss of function and pain that can result from shortened muscles. People with Tay-Sachs disease are at high risk of lung infections that cause breathing problems and accumulation of mucus in their lungs. Patients have to constantly use CPT to reduce the mucus that builds up in their lungs. CPT techniques include clapping or percussion that can be done manually or mechanical. When done manually, the therapist will lightly clap the patient's chest, back, and area under their arms to remove the mucus out of the patient's lung and let the patient cough it out. In January 2011, Ronan's parents, Emily Webb and her husband, noticed that their nine-month-old son had vision problems. They went to see an pediatric ophthalmologist and the doctor announced that Ronan had cherry red spots on the backs of his retina. It was a sign of fatal genetic disease, Tay-Sachs. When Ronan got his terminal diagnosis, Emily said, That was the day for me that he died. The day of his death for me was January 10, 2011. Ronan's sudden death in February at the age of three significantly impacted his family. Ronan had inspired his mother to write a book, sharing his and her story to raise awareness and to educate people about this rare disease. From blog posts to a book, Emily Rapp claimed that she tries to make meaning from chaos and then putting it out in the world. Tay-Sachs disease is a rare mutation in the genes that occurred only around 250 patients around the world. Patients with TSD must endure a lifelong hardship that not only affects themselves, but also their loved ones. There is no cure for the disease, but together we can help prevent this fatal disease from taking away a child's life. Together we can provide support and comfort for the affected families. You won't have a family who has to go through what we're experiencing.